Hey guys, remember this thing? Yeah, it's been a little while since I've done my last Forgotten Gems video. This is number three, of course. And, you know what? I found quite a few gems this time around. Not to say uh, the other ones before uh, weren't gems, but these are some really, really cool games that you guys and gals should add to your Game Boy collection. So, enjoy, have a look. Magic and Puzzles is your game, then Solomon's Club is the right fit for you. This is a port of Tecmo's great puzzle game, Solomon's Key, on the Nintendo. You are Dana, an apprentice in the arts of magic, and you must guide him in solving Solomon's many trap-filled puzzle rooms. The basic idea of the game is to break blocks, create them, and collect a key in each room. Grabbing the key opens the door, going through it, and, well, you go off to another uh, room. Sounds simple? Well, at first, sure, but it gets crazy fast. With over 50 levels and inclusion of an item shop and a password feature, Solomon's Club would be a great addition to your Game Boy lineup. Have you ever wondered why Nintendo never made an Excite Bike 2? Well, o Ultra sorta did. Meet Motocross Maniacs, the spiritual successor to Excite Bike. Trust me, the game may not look like much, but I had a hard time putting this one down. You race around courses, vying to get the quickest laps, all the while popping wheelies, going around loop-de-loops, and collecting nitro to blast your way to victory. With 8 tracks and 3 difficulty levels, it's hard not to play this game. Even in short bursts, it's fantastic. Forget the abysmal NES release. This game pack is nothing like its big brother. This one is totally excellent. You play as Bill and Ted and you go around collecting orbs called Time Fragments. Collect them all and take Take the exit and you're off to another level. It's very simple, kind of like Solomon's Club, but with a bunch of enemies and traps laid out, it sounds easier than it actually is. Still, the game is good, and one that should not be overlooked because of its NES counterpart. With 10 levels, 2 cheat codes, as well as a password feature, this game is a great choice to beef up your library with a quality game, and chances are you'll find this game for cheap. As far as black box games on the NES goes, Balloon Fight will always be one of my favorites. Enter Balloon Kid, again, the spiritual successor to Balloon Fight. This time around you play as Alice, a balloon aficionado, out to rescue her brother who has more rocks in his head than brains, as he's drifted away by tying too many balloons on his person. If I were in her shoes, I would leave him be and let the chips fall where they may. But seeing as we would have no game, I digress. Alice can zip around the screen, smacking into baddies, inflate her own balloons, collect various trinkets like hearts and other balloons, and even let go of her balloons and launch herself like a Vader splash into the corner. If you don't get that, then there's no hope for you. Vader rocks. And so does this game. At eight stages, complete with boss battles, three different modes, this one has hidden gem all over it. Takara knows how to make a decent fighter on the Game Boy. Yes, like last time, I praised Battle Arena to Shinden for being a good little fighter on the handheld. Well, this one is even better in my opinion. Because you get to play as Terry Bogart, Joe Higashi, and my Shirinuri. Plus, they're all in super cute deformed chibi design, which is really cool. By pressing or holding various buttons, you'll do different strengths of damage, and you have a ton of selectable characters to choose from, with 16 plus fighters, super Game Boy enhancements, super special moves, tons of secret codes, single and 3 on 3 battle modes, there's a lot to do in this one. While I feel Blades of Steel is the best hockey game on the Game Boy, Tecmo Ball is easily the best football game. What's not to love about Tecmo Bowl? It's classic arcade goodness with just enough depth to keep you coming back for more. That's the mark of a great game. Even though it's simple, the game is so much fun and compelling that you just want to play it one more game, one more time. Tecmo Bowl sports a password feature, invisible teams, real player names from that time period, coach mode, 12 teams to play. You'll get your money's worth 10 times over from this cheap sports game. This is what the NES version should have been. Figures that LJN's better offerings of their games, their NES games, are much nicer on the Game Boy. Well, that's because LJN had nothing to do with this game. Instead, it's a forgotten Capcom gem. You're not playing as Eddie Valiant this time. Like in the NES version, you're playing as Roger here. You go around LA looking for clues, avoiding the weasels, and that's pretty well it. All the while, you're trying to save your red-headed main squeeze from a trip to the dip. While it is a short game, passwords and all, I really enjoyed this one. You should definitely, definitely check this one out. Now this is what the NES game should have been like. Ghostbusters 2 is a top-down action game where you play as two of your favorite guys from the movies. One button is used for the proton pack, the other is used for the trapper. You 
go around each level blasting ghosts, clearing out each floor. Wash, rinse, repeat. While this may sound kind of boring after a while, I really had no problem with it. Yes, with only four stages spanning multiple floors, mind you, it is a short game. But what's there is good, and I really had a lot of fun with this one, and I think you will too. can't go wrong with any of those suggestions. I highly recommend those games. Especially Ghostbusters 2. It was uh, quite a surprise actually when I picked up and played the game. But it's, it's loads of fun too. It's not like the NES games at all, which is awesome. Freaking awesome. But anyways guys, hey that does it for another episode. Let's wrap this thing up. For those about to retro and play Game Boy games, the original stuff, we fucking salute you. See you later.